All right. Hey again, everyone. Channel Futures Editorial Director Craig Galbraith here. It's Channel Futures TV time. Today, we get a chance to talk with Paula Depp. Paula is Managing Director, SIs and Industry Value Networks with Google Cloud. Paula, how are you? Doing very well, Craig. It's a wonderful evening out here in New York. Thank you very much. Ah, terrific, terrific. Thanks for joining me. Wanted to say it was a real pleasure to talk with some of your team at the recent MSP Summit. So uh, first of all, thank you for your support of that event. We love being at these events where we have customers, partners show up at strength and of course motivated to learn more about AI, about MSP. So thank you for having us there. Yeah, absolutely. So let's talk about those two topics today. Curious, Paul, from, from your time in the industry and your tenure there at Google Cloud, how have you seen the role of the MSP shift and, and what are some of the trends that are driving that? Wow, that's Craig, a loaded question, but let's, uh, let's start. One of the things that has led our growth has been a very quick, honest assessment of our own cap capabilities back in January 2019. We were significantly subscale compared to our competition. At, the, at our subscale position in that morning of January 2019, we realized that we are not going to be able to do it all alone. We need partners. So we have been 100% partner attached, partner focused company since that day. Right. And one of those partner categories that have been important to our growth journey are what all of us call MSPs. Right. And the MSPs have evolved in the early days of our journey. The managed service providers were critical partners in our effort to distribute our product and make sure that the product was up and running. The MSPs did that and they did that really well. They were able to make sure the product was available to every corner of the world. They were able to show, may ensure that they were providing enhanced uh, services like support services that went beyond just what product support would be available to. They made sure that the product was deployed in the right manner. They made sure that there was it was secure and customers were using it the right way. But that was the traditional MSP business, right? Fast forward to 2024, uh, we have grown, we have scaled, of course. Uh, the industry has scaled, so that's not a surprise. There's something that's called Gen AI that just happened. I'm sure uh, you, you read about it a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so fundamentally, uh, Craig, what I'm trying to drive is the, the theater, the landscape, the canvas has changed, right? And so we got to change our brush strokes. We got to change how we approach this canvas as well. And so, and, and rightfully so, the MSPs themselves are also transforming. In the new canvas, what's going on is uh, customers, are looking to the cloud ever more for driving higher degrees of transformation. They feel the, the pressure of the rapid innovation around AI. They feel the pressure of the frequent uh, data leakages, hacks, and you know whatever you read about almost on a daily basis. And really, we talk to a CIO or a CEO, the top two things is, how, how do I stay competitive? How do I embrace this technology and how do I do so in a manner where I'm not compromising our, my security or my consumer's security, right? And those two realities, I think, have, are driving a lot of change in the MSP uh, lens as well. Paul, you, you mentioned uh, AI. I want to dive into that a little bit more. Mm -hmm. We know, of course, this is a, a huge topic in the industry, but also a pretty large focus within Google Cloud's business. How do you envision AI sort of reshaping the future of the MSP industry, particularly in terms of, of creating a more AI managed service model? Yeah, uh, great question, right? I think it's uh, something that uh, is, is going to be super pervasive. I mean, pervasive is probably the only way I can describe it. Number one is the MSPs need, uh, need to, and many are actually, without my having to preach to them, are using AI in their regular service offering, right? So uh, your service offering is to keep applications up and running, make sure uh, it's secure, make sure that people are, you know, everything is aligned to the LDAP and you have multi-factor authentication and whatnot to let people in. That's keeping the lights on. And um, the MSPs need to figure out, well, how do I use AI to get more efficient at this, right? So that's, that's uh, 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 you know, think of that as lever number one. Lever number two is uh, thinking a little bit more transformative on that on that same dimension. That okay, 
uh, sure, AI can help me be efficient. Can it, can it also help me be more effective? Right? Which is to say, hey, uh, can I start predicting things before they happen? Machine learning, sure can, gives you a lot of abilities, right? Provided you are now able to use multimodal capabilities, look at not just logs, but look at other events that are happening around you, structured or unstructured, uh, manifesting in structured or unstructured data, and potentially take preventative or predictive action, right? That's that's makes you more effective. You're not just efficient, you're really more effective, correct? And the third dimension is uh, really the ability for the MSP to address what's a new opportunity, and you you call it the AI MSP. I mean, think about uh, the 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 impact of AI in the MSP's journey or customer's journey today. So the customers, of course, are like I, I'm telling you. I mean, just being a, even in being in part of Google is hard for us to keep up with the pace of change. I'm sure you being in the business that you are in, you are also hard pressed to keep up with the change, right? Think about customers who are running traditional businesses, brick and mortar businesses or digital businesses, but they, you know, for them to keep up with this technology change is just over, overwhelming right now. Let's, let's call it out for what it is, right? And so MSPs can actually fill a big void. They can get into the picture of saying, hey, if we can take that away from you. You focus on your business. Give me, uh, allow me to take care of all the complexity of AI, be able to change the ever increasing number of models and the ever increasing uh, benchmarks that come out every morning, be able to sift through that, find the right models at the right price points for the right use cases. It's never going to be one model or one platform fits all. I don't think so, right? Uh, but then finding the right models, the right tools, and then bringing it to bear for the customer in the manner in the manner where it is well, future proofing is probably to 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 stronger term but at least one that is resilient for a customer to at least ride on not change every now and then so bring that whole technology landscape to bear and then manage it for that customer right that's a lot of work if you really ask me absolutely Paul. so let's dig into that a little more uh, a little more specific you talked about the platform oriented approach but from a from a company perspective a little more on how Google is approaching AI within its partner ecosystem specifically and, and supporting that evolution to the AI MSP that you referenced. So I wondered if you could speak to how your business yeah. itself is evolving to incentivize and enable partners in this area. Oh yeah, sure. Again, uh, I, I struggle to, to figure out where do I start, but let's start where I left off, right? Sure. Uh, which is to say that, uh, yes, we are taking a platform approach which is where I just left off, right? So it's not just the model, the mo the best model of the day doesn't necessarily have to win the, uh, win the narrative. It is fundamentally about the best model at the best price point with the easiest use, uh, in the, with the ease of using in the most secure manner. Uh, that's, that's what's needed. That's what customers need, right? And so that's number one. At Google, the first thing is, coming at it at a platform approach really means and stands for something. It's not just a tagline. We, we, look, we are looking at this entire journey and we are making sure that at every point on that journey for all personas involved, the developer persona, the, the, the engineer persona, and the user persona, this is a platform. It appears as a platform, right? That's number one. Number two, I was serious when I said that, look, this is going to be, going to be a multi-model, multi you know, multi-provider world, right? There's not going to be one model that fits all. And so our second approach to this is, uh, from a partnering sense, is embracing the reality that this is going to be, you know, the generative AI world is, is going to need an open approach. So we are open. Uh, I think Thomas uh, Kurian has been very, uh, been very vocal about the, while we are full stack in the sense we build everything from the chip level up to the applications, Right, so think about it from the tensor processing units, which are like the like complementary or competition to to GPUs, you could argue, all the way up to using models for context center transformation. Every layer of that is in one place, which is good. But then at every layer, we are also open. So the infrastructure layer, we offer customers both the ability to use TPUs or use GPUs. At the model layer, we allow customers to use Claude or use Gemini or for that Lama, or for that matter Lama, right? So I think that's the second reality. From a partnering sense, we've been very clear that uh, we will be 
coming into the, into this with a very open approach and that actually is resonating with customers we see customers using the vertex ai platform for what it is which is a manifestation of that platform approach not just for gemini but for other models as well we are seeing for example that 9 out of 10 ai unicorns are choosing to build on google because they feel safe and they feel that yes this is a true platform they can leverage gpus or tpus they can use us for training or inferencing and they can use the model garden for showing up for you know uh, making their models available so it's resonating so from a partner approach both of those aspects are hopefully speak to the openness of our platform and the uh, the third piece in terms of how google is taking ai into its partnering orientation is uh, literally using ai in the way we interact with our partners right which means for example as a partner of google you interact with many different people at google every day uh it's a complex business the cloud business no matter where you come at it from uh there are probably tons of programs that are at play at any given point of time there are tons of accounts there are tons of there are different markets with different rules and those some of it driven by compliance and regulations and so on and so forth so being on top of this is actually a fairly ta- uh, fairly onerous task let's put it this way for partners right and so we are also trying to use ai to make the partner experience a lot more seamless a lot more easier when they engage with google so for example if you're a partner and you're interacting with us in uk i uk ireland and us just keeping two simple english speaking geographies forget language for a moment right and you were an msp as well as a services partner just just the number of programs and number of incentives and number of uh, things that are available to you as a partner could be overwhelming so could we for example bring an ai interface to that whole problem to the whole interaction so you could just log into partner advantage which is our partner facing uh, 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 you know portal and say hey google or hey gemini or whatever can you tell me what are the what are my rebates and what are my programs right that i'm entitled to how much have i earned versus what's the what have, what is what was the earning potential am i leaving money behind right uh, uh is there anything missing from the number of projects or things that i am actually working on versus ones that we are getting uh, accounted for so things like that nature become part and parcel of making the partner experience really seamless and easier in a sense what i'm trying to say craig is uh, there's a market opportunity marked by you know what i just said our openness and our platform approach and then the second piece is making sure that the partner experience itself is driven by an ai oriented uh, posture and of course the last one i would say that is uh, we are obviously adding uh, fuel to the fire by making sure our incentives uh, and our programs are more and more driven towards adopting the first two postures which is the ai platform posture and the ai openness posture right so it's a mix of these four things that's part and parcel of google's approach to bringing ai in our interaction uh, with our partners all well, thanks for your time today on channel features cb what a, a fantastic discussion around the the future of the ai channel partner I, i really enjoyed it thank you for your time thank you craig it was a pleasure